The other test, and I think this is a test that's not well understood by some of the candidates in the race and not, what has not been well debated, is, is our democracy up to this task? And that is a really non-trivial question because... I mean, it clearly isn't right now. So far, we have not. <laughs> we haven't been. The Green New Deal has become the American left's global warming rallying cry. Spearheaded by newcomers to Congress and embraced by 2020 presidential nomination frontrunners, the Green New Deal represents a clear and present danger to our economy and to our well-being. The cornerstone of the Green New Deal is coercing us away from reliable, affordable fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, and foisting upon us intermittent, expensive energy from wind and solar generation. In the name of stopping global warming, the Green New Deal would rob us of the very tools that make resilience against it possible. The Green New Deal like the original New Deal, would be a failure. The Green New Deal is economic central planning, and that's failed every time it's been tried. Planners and national capitals simply do not have the requisite knowledge to achieve what they set out to. The Green New Deal, which largely ignores the enormous potential of nuclear power, would not usher in an era of abundant low-carbon energy. It would usher in an era of energy scarcity. Fuels, food, healthcare, virtually everything in our economy that promotes life would be harder to come by under the Green New Deal. Furthermore, economic central planning has shown that it causes immense degradation to land, air, and water quality. Chernobyl, anyone? Far from being an environmental panacea, the Green New Deal would require massive ramp-ups in the mining of rare earth metals, and it would eat more land than is required to produce energy from dense hydrocarbons. More fundamentally, though, the Green New Deal is immoral. It would forcibly prevent individuals, families, and businesses from utilizing the resources that they judge would best facilitate the achievement of their goals. It would constrain our choices and make life worse for hundreds of millions of people. The Green New Deal isn't about stopping global warming. It's about controlling our lives. Just listen to the words of Green New Deal architect Troikot Chakrabarty, who said, the interesting thing about the Green New Deal is it wasn't originally a climate thing at all. We really think of it as a how do you change the entire economy thing. And he's right. So what's the alternative to the Green New Deal? The alternative is free market adaptation. Warming will require some adjustments. Let's start facilitating that process by ending bad, market-distorting policies that inadvertently increase emissions and increase risk. One example of a needed policy change is zoning reform. Zoning laws in our cities and in our counties artificially flatten our urban environments by barring dense development, and they create seemingly unending sprawl. Our laws tip the scales in favor of a suburban lifestyle putting more people into cars each day, and generating more emissions from transportation. A second example of a needed policy change is to the National Flood Insurance Program. Unlike market insurance, which incentivizes low-risk behavior, the National Flood Insurance Program encourages people to build and to rebuild in some of our riskiest floodplains. If global warming will indeed increase the likelihood of coastal and riverbank flooding, the very last thing we should be doing is putting more people and more property in harm's way. Big picture. Human beings are more prosperous and more capable today than ever before. And that's on account of capitalism. Even in the improbable, ultra-high emission scenario, known in the climate change literature as RCP 8.5, sea level rise will not exceed about four-fifths of a meter by the end of the current century. Even this worst-case scenario does not demand that we put the brakes on capitalism with the Green New Deal. Rather, our scientific understanding should encourage us to let the life-promoting engines of capitalism accelerate no social initiatives and no political systems but capitalism have the power to move us from our historic state of climate vulnerability to one of climate independence.